Hi, uh, my name's Nick, I'm from No Regrets Personal Training and today we're going to be looking into shoulder pain and all the different intricate details and problems and everything to do with uh, like why people struggle to fully rehabilitate a shoulder problem. It can be quite a hard one because you, you're always going to be continually using your shoulder and that's what sort of aggravates it. Um, so what I'm going to show you today is like it sort of looks like quite a long drawn out process but if, it's actually quite simple if you just follow the, the order. Don't sort of skip any steps, you really need to address them all in the right order. If you do that you'll, you'll really get on top of it uh, and you'll be on top of it for, for the whole time, for the rest of your life, you, as long as you sort of maintain everything. So, so first thing you, need, you really need to do is work out is your um, injury a high risk or a low risk. Um, so if it's, a, if it's a high risk, it's sort of something you really need to just go out and see the, uh, a physio or a chiropractor or someone like that to um, because they're, they're the person you really need to see if it's in that much pain. Don't start mucking around with it yourself too much. Um, second thing you really need to do is work out what's causing it, identify where it's all coming from. Um, so if, if, if you go and see the chiropractor and physio for, a, for example, um, but you're doing everything that started off in the first place, just treating the symptoms is really pointless. You really need to try and put a, uh, put a plug in the leak as such. All right, so once you've sort of plugged the leak, then you can sort of work through your next stages. So um, nutrition, um, which I've, this is all detailed in the slides, so you can sort of read through that on your own. But you know, a lot of people disregard nutrition and getting to sleep on time, reducing the stress. Um, stress, for example, manifests itself in the shoulder and the neck really easily. So physically, there could be nothing wrong with you, but because mentally you're absolutely exhausted and trashed and from working too many hours, now you've got a shoulder and a neck problem. Alright, so your exercises in the gym are okay, it's just that you need to get a handle on your stress. If you're not eating the right food, you just won't be able to supply the right nutrition to all your joints and your muscles, your tendons, all these guys. You're a system of systems, you can't sort of have one without the other. Alright, so um, these are some of the things that you really need to get on top of. Before you even start looking at what stretching program, what stability exercise, strength exercise, just nut out where all the problems are sort of originating from and put an end to it, all right? So these are the stuff that, you that most programs fail to even look at, yet alone know what to do with. All right, so we're gonna assume that you've sort of moved through looking at postural things and little habits that have crept in, and we're at the stage where we wanna design a program. That's what the point of this video is. Um, so we can keep it quite short, we won't go into all that other stuff. So I've got Nathan here today, and we're gonna go through the first stages of like when you design a program should be based around flexibility. Now there's a lot of stretches you really should do. I'm going to sort of show you probably the, the, our top sort of three or four. Um, and these are the ones that we commonly find are the problem ones. And, and these are, so you can use it as an assessment. And if you fail the stretch, then the, or the test, then it becomes like in your, in your stretching program. So first thing we're going to do is the scratch stretch. So Nathan's going to um, put the towel behind his back, and basically he's going to be sort of pulling his arm. Well, firstly he's going to be pulling his arm down, so he's stretching the shoulder on this side, and then he's going to be pulling the arm up, which is stretching the shoulder on this side. This side is he's stretching his external rotators. This side is stretching his internal rotators when he pulls it down. All right. um, to find out whether you're tight or not, if you got rid of the towel, so Nathan just drops the towel, and he's, pretty, he's got pretty good flexibility on both sides, this one's a little bit tighter, but this finger should be able to touch the scapula on this side, and this finger here should be able to touch the shoulder blade on this side. So you can see he's not too bad here, but he's quite tight on this side, so he would need to do more of the stretching down of the scratch stretch than the other side. That would be our first stretch that we would look for. Next one we're going to do is a peg stretch. So Nathan's going to lie on his stomach. He's going to pop one arm out to the side like so, the other hand by his side like he's going to do a push up. He's going to turn his head towards you guys at the camera here. And he's going to keep his shoulder sort of firmly planted into the ground. 
and very gently he's going to push himself up. So he comes up like so. So he's driving the shoulder into the ground and then he's going to get his hand. He's going to try and like bring his wrist back and spread his fingers out like Spider-Man and hold that stretch there for about 10 to 20 seconds, maybe even longer. And if, if that's if pec minor, which is at the front of the chest here, commonly the, the muscle that tightens up, it's a real chronic problem muscle. Probably 99% of shoulder pain cases we find this is a problem. So this would be an excellent stretch to use. Um, so once Nathan's done that exercise, he's going to move into his um, hip flexor stretch because just treating the exercises around the shoulder are not always the problem. Sometimes it's the pelvis, I and mean, many times it's the pelvis as well. So Nathan's going to show you a hip flexor stretch where he's going to pull his arm up, he's going to tuck his pelvis under, his belly button in, he's going to twist himself away. And if he was fairly tight, it wouldn't look like that, it would look more like, like this. All right. And that, see how that hip is now sort of placing the shoulder forward of where it should be. So there's a lot more stress coming onto the shoulder girdle because of the hips. All right. um, there's a whole massive amount of hip stretches we would do, um, but that's sort of one simple one you could use. Um, we could even, for an example, Nathan put his hands on the ground, stay here your foot in front. Put your foot in front of yourself. Yeah, he's going to lift his back foot up and then he's going to sit up straight. That would be like a quad stretch. Um, if his heel was touching his bum, that would be good flexibility, so he's a little bit tight. So we could sort of say, well, this is a stretch that Nathan may need. Just by doing simple things like that, again, these are things that people don't look for, they just treat the shoulder. It could be coming from other areas. All right, so there's our first couple of stretches. Now, there's one really good one that I'll show you for the neck that we call the Big Bang Neck Stretch. Nathan's going to sit on the bench here. And he's going to hold the bench with his right hand. He's going to lean his body to the left. And he's going to grab his other hand and he's going to gently pull his neck over. So it's going to be stretching through the lateral part of the neck here. And it's called a big bang neck stretch because there's three parts to it. Learned this from Dan Hellman in our, on our golf specialist course. Excellent exercise, an excellent way to stretch. Now, the second part he's going to do is bring his head back up. He's going to keep his chin tucked in. He's going to turn his head around and his hand's going to grab behind him here. And he's going to pull down towards his, almost like he's going to look at the floor. Basically, now he's stretching the muscles that do the action of this, which are very commonly tight and become quite chronic pain for someone with shoulder pain. Then the third part of the stretch is he keeps his chin tucked in, and then he turns his head to look up at the roof this way. Uh, yeah, sorry, that way as he's leaning still over a bit. There you go. And that stretches his upper traps. All right, so there's a series of stretches that I would use in nearly every shoulder case that I see. All right. If I don't stretch the tight ones first, I can't strengthen the weak ones because they, they inhibit the weaker muscles. So even if I have the right strengthening exercise, it won't work if these guys are still like all fired up. All right, now we move into mobilising. This is where foam rollers are excellent for doing that and there's plenty, we have plenty of videos on the foam rollers on, on how to do that so you can check them out already. Um, we're going to skip straight into the stability exercises. And Nathan's going to show you here um, how we would start. We're going to start on the mat. And this is uh, um, what we call Poor stance exercise, so Nathan's going to go into opposite arm and leg, extending out, and basically we want to see if he can maintain his pelvis nice and neutral, like so. He comes back in nice and slowly, and extends back out again. So this shoulder is sort of learning to push. Um, if we start to see it all caving in, we know he's not doing it right, so if he pushes up into my hand, push right, there you go. That would be like what we call serratus anterior, working on that. Alright, so this is an excellent form of exercise because the shoulder is very, very strong 
in the four point position. That's why it's a good place to start when you start stability training. Now, if we wanted to up the ante, we just bring in something like the bow suit. And this is where we can challenge the pelvis as well as the shoulder. So now Nathan's going to do exactly the same exercise, but it's just a little bit tougher because he has to stabilise it a bit harder through here. And if, if we've worked out from the stretches that this is where it's all coming from, this could be extremely effective in like getting rid of the leaks, right? Because now the shoulder's going to be affected if this doesn't do its job. Right? So a really, really effective exercise. Doesn't create pain for the client. If you're a trainer, you can, you can, Nathan does one more. You can sort of challenge him a little bit more by giving him little knocks. You can see where he, his stabilizer's got to work quite, quite hard to maintain his balance. Um, next exercise we can use is the, the balance board. If you've got balance boards, they're excellent. And Nathan's going to show you how to do, how we can do like a one leg stabilizer. So we're sort of going from a four point now to a push up position. And all he's doing is just maintaining his balance. And again, if I just try and add little touches to him, his stabilizers are working really hard. So he's learning to push, but we're not actually pushing yet. Because the pushing action is always the one that creates the problems. The rowing actions are all good. Um, there'll be no pain from them, but you need to learn how to push again. Have a rest of that. So now, once we've sort of worked out our stability phase, we've done flexibility with our stretches, we're working through stability. There's a couple of exercises you can start using. Now we want to target the weak muscles, and the weak muscles are typically lower trapezius and serratus anterior. So Nathan's going to show you all that pull down retraction move. That targets lower trapezius. So basically, he's going to be in his lat pull down, and all he's doing is just He's just depressing his shoulders is what we call it and he holds that for 10 seconds. And then as he, and that's 10 seconds he lets it come right up, gets a good stretch out of the shoulders and then he just depresses the shoulders down again. See that? Maintaining a nice postural position with his ribcage. And this is sort of getting great activity into here. Alright, so he's holding his shoulders in the correct position. So now we can move into onto the foam roller where we're going to get him along the upside down. And we're going to work through serratus anterior, so we're isolating the muscles. All right. So last exercise was lower trapezius. This this time it's serratus anterior. And now all he's going to do is going to keep his elbows straight. And he's going to push up. See how he protracted his shoulders, comes back down and pushes up. The reason he's on a foam roller and not on a bench lets his scapula move more freely, is exactly like they're meant to. So they can sort of move like that as he moves his arms. All right. So. He's not actually pushing anything all the way yet. We're just sort of preparing him for it, isolating the weak muscle, which is sort of deep in here for his serratus anterior. All right, so that'll be how we've done lower traps and serratus anterior. Now we can move into start to integrate the exercises. Nathan's going to set up the cable and we're going to do like a cable pull and a cable push. Now I prefer to do them with single arm. Single arm allows a bit more mobility of the thoracic and um, spine and also the ribcage so you can get a little bit more freedom with the movement. So Nathan's going to show you here, we would do the pull exercise first. And basically he's just getting a nice, and you see how he set it up on an angle so we can sort of activate lower traps. It's not wrong to have it that horizontal or low, it just gets better activation and it maintains a nice posture. All right, so then if he spins around and does the push, so now we're in our cable push. I always prefer cables than dumbbells to start, just because they're a lot more um, safer, um, probably more effective, even for beginners who don't have shoulder pain. I find cables are a much more easier way for people to learn the movement. Um, there's no compression of joints because dumbbells and barbells work with gravity. I can sort of take the weight away from him instead of on top of him. That's why I prefer the cables. Um, plus I can get like more rotation, all right, so it doesn't lock him in like a seatbelt. Alright, so there's a pull and a push in an integrated movement. 
We would also highly encourage using the deadlifts. You can check out our video on deadlifting technique on that. Um, and, you, and we explain how to do that correctly because that's a video on its own. But I'll be using that at this stage as well. Uh, and the last exercise I'm going to show you um, from the strength phase before we move to power is the next exercise I learned in a course called Rehab Trainer where you start to isolate the serratus anterior into an integrated exercise. So he calls it an iso-integrate. Right, so Nathan's going to show you how to do that. And we use a fit ball for this one. He grabs some green tubing and you see he'll put it in his fingers. Yep, like so. And then he, he rolls forward onto the fit ball. I pass him the two dumbbells as if he's going to do a chest press. And I grab the cable as such, except it's messed up a bit. And all I do is I just hold the, the rubber band behind him like so. And me doing this is sort of encouraging his serratus anterior to fire. Right? So this is why it's isolating serratus anterior into the integrated movement of the chest press, which has also got these glutes, these hamstrings, these abdominals all switched on at the same time. So this is such a really effective exercise. In many cases I've used this. Someone could, couldn't do this movement without pain. I had the tubing to it and no pain at all. So to get the most out of it, you need to do a lot of repetitions with this. All right, so I'll be using like two to three sets of 15 rep, reps not working 8 to 12. Alright, thanks Nate. Well done. Um, so that very, very effective exercise once you're at this stage of your rehabilitation. Now we're into the phase where we can do strength, so Nathan's going to grab his two dumbbells and he's going to do what we call a split jerk. So now power is defined by speed and movement. So Nathan really needs to make this move super fast and he's going to give you four reps of this one. Bang, you see how quick he moves that? Bang. And that's a power movement of shoulder press. So only once he's done all of the other phases would he be able to do that without pain. If he skipped any of the steps, even the ones at the very start, he will not be able to do that effectively. Even if he does do it, he probably won't be doing it as um, heavier weight as he might have liked to do, or as fast as he might have liked. So if you play sports or something, you know, you really need to train for this movement. Um, so there you go, there's quite a, a long video this one, but I've tried to keep, get as much information in there as, as possible. Go to our website and check it, there's articles with more content. Check out all their other videos, because they sort of talk to this one. Um, and that, if you're struggling with your shoulder pain, um, get in touch with us and we can steer you in the right direction might be, and we can give you a program. We have online training programs that we can help people with. Um, yeah, uh, other than that, um, look forward to seeing you on our next video.